Just what was it brother couldn't bring himself to say to me? What's he so scared of? <laughs> the truth is, you and I, well, we're not two brothers. <laughs> No, no, that is a genuine blood seal, and you are definitely my younger brother. But the helmet's actually our younger sister. Hi, big brother Al! <laughs> to be honest, an Alric sister isn't such a bad idea. We live in a time when the good shows outweigh the bad shows. The problem here is that the bad shows are filler shows. As I explained, these filler shows exist to waste your time by rotting your brain. But what makes a filler show? Well, for starters, you know it's just a filler show because the show never changes. The cast never evolves, the setting has no impact, and every episode at its core is the exact same shit over and over and over again. Until the parents go crazy. And if it does change, it's for the worse. Cases include adding a talking dog because he can't characterize for beans. Making up bullshit genetic information to justify zoophilia. Obliterating the Earth to justify turning said show into a galactic soap opera. Jeez, it's like they're producing this fan pandering filler to play into a sort of tax scheme or something. And all of them are cosmetic changes to keep the people and the formula the exact same. Case in point, Johnny Test. See, this episode aims to apply a cosmetic change, that of a redesign, but it obviously doesn't stick for obvious reasons. Which makes our talk about cosmetic changes... Isn't it all pointless? Regardless, it has an idea to suggest that, if this were a smarter show, would result in a cosmetic change that would radically change the tone of the show. And dare I say, it's formula? Hey! Isn't it fucking retarded that we haven't changed the character design yet? Seems like an oxymoron, considering why the Simpsons don't even recognize the meaning of the word cancel firsthand, but alright. I'll play your little game. Ladies and gentlemen of the mob, time to riot loose with our phantom arson of Johnny Test, episode 76B, Johnny Testosterone. Belts up, gang. We're about to land. The episode begins with Johnny being buried by the tallest of his peers, more specifically the peers that exist specifically for the plot. I can understand working in basketball for this episode, but a school choir? You have got to be joking. Quit holding back, Scotty. You did Ned's Declassified for crying out loud. Hey, buddy. Why are we bummed? I'm getting older, but I'm not getting taller. What? Look out, Johnny! Ah, hands up! Okay, you may have a point. Look. I know girls mature faster than boys at his age, but can you find some other way to call bullshit on this? Please? Patrick Stewart's still in pretty decent shape. Naturally, Johnny goes to his sisters for help, but they tell him to just accept his body for the time being. <laughs> oh, 
now that is good hot chocolate. You two lovely ladies are such geniuses. Oh look, Johnny's found himself an application to use his smallish bot to good use. No oh, thank you, smallish boy. You've made us so happy. Hold on, is Johnny learning a valuable lesson? Maybe you're right. <laughs> Of course not. We've got eight minutes left. Fed up with the tall kids existing solely to trample on him every time, Johnny goes through with the big science tonight. Our metabolism accelerator. It will increase your body's testosterone levels, thus increasing growth. Oh, you think it's a laser? Nope. It's just growth hormones being injected in a body. Why are they wearing hazmat suits? Cheese. There's just one thing, Johnny's afraid of needles. He doesn't exactly go for this pill either. Are you nuts? You actually think you're gonna swallow that thing? Well, good news, Johnny boy. It's a suppository. Johnny settles for a coating of hormones and a bite of peach yogurt, and we get a first glimpse at Johnny's stretched puppet. This is insulting. This is downright shameful. Anyone can do better than this. The show's brain dead fans can do better than this. And as a matter of fact, I can do better. Visual design. Now this is a redesign I could get behind. It expresses that deep down in that handsome young lad's athletic bod lies the same arrogant dickhole we all know and cringe at, except now he's written to be a partial Casanova as well. How about that? I'ma go peg Johnny's height at about 5 foot 10. Above Dookie's estimated 5 foot 6, and the Test Sisters is 5 foot 8. Not as tall as most dudes, but still pretty tall for his physique. And then there's Johnny's hair. First thing to notice, mullet. Second, I have added a hint of blue in Johnny's hair. His sideburns, and of course, mullet. Also, Johnny's jacket is notably absent to reflect Johnny's show offiness on top of his muscle tone. I mean, just look at that killer bod. I actually drew him shirtless before I drew him with the shirt on. That's how he on is. And finally, his pants are roughly the same. Mullet. Okay, now that... I am definitely going to call bullshit on, because Johnny wouldn't be flat on his ass by being pushed around by his still taller peers alone, but rather, he should have been tripped up by... Visual design. Surprise! Dutch didn't expect Sissy to turn up here since, you know, she isn't in the episode proper, but here she is, having naturally gone through a natural growth spurt in this hypothetical alternate universe version of this episode. And it has been generous to her, most especially making her precisely six foot four and full of muscle. So she clearly towers over Johnny and can be capable of tripping him up whenever she can on top of being a total tease. And with the natural acids granted onto her, teasing is now all the more easier. I uh, kept the red bandana and piercings, gave her combat boots, full muscles, and huge. Track to land! Johnny naturally wants to be even taller, but his sisters ain't having none of that shit because of the obvious side effects. You don't think it's more exciting with the play-by-play? -play? Well, it's more interesting than WWE, I can give it that. Thank you and good night. Dookie tries to dissuade Johnny, but he distracts him with steak and wolfs down the testosterone-laced peach yogurt, because of course he would. And it starts turning him into a monster, because of course it would. Ugh. And the neighbors say I'm loud. The group try to fix Johnny peacefully in order to not offset his enhanced temper, but how well do they do? Now this one hurt a bit. Once again, this whole broadcast has been brought to you by Sam. It's everywhere. Get used to it. He's riding out! Excellent. And Rippity has reached his ultimate hypothetical form. Unstoppable. Blue! And complete. Okay, I'm 
artificially scared. Oh no, you should be scared when Johnny punches Goku in the dick. Kaiser, you and your buddies at Team Four Star are the gift that keep on giving. Naturally, the military want to capture the creature for experimentation because of course they would. With no other option left, they decide on the suppository. Then we get a few brief seconds of nothing happening. Come on, come on, get him in, get him in, come on. And already, fire in the hole. Oh, man, I hate getting medicine like that. Wait till your dad hears this. You're gonna be in big trouble. Big. Conclusion. If you've been watching our show since the very beginning, you already know the whole song and dance. The writing's a soulless husk and blah blah blah. The characters are obnoxious assholes and med and merp. The animation is just 2D puppets on a screen and dippity doo, and there's literally no love put into the show. What makes this episode all the more sad is that, like how the series in general could have made for a pretty decent precursor to Phineas and Ferb, this episode could have ushered in a new formula akin to Johnny Bravo, but without addressing the attraction towards the female body, we're left with this b-ball and trash heap. What a shock. I will admit, you have raised some good ideas for future projects, Mr. Fellows, including one in particular that I've recently gotten the go-ahead to get started. So I might thank you for trying something new. And I thank you for fucking over with my lighting. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, the mob, thanks for riding loose with our fandom arson. Like, favor, comment, and subscribe. And as always, good fight, good night, and stay frosty. I like Comic Con! Flash. I said eight minutes left, and now here we are, at the end, eight minutes later. What the hell's happening? It's a rape whistle. Turn it on! Why do cable outlets keep on broadcasting me? All my new shows are shit.